Take your Bible, go to the book of Proverbs as we continue our series in Proverbs. We're looking at Solomon's counsel to his children. Proverbs for parents is the series we've been looking at. We're going to be in chapter 12 tonight. And noticing how we can teach our children about using words. There's words that help and there's words that harm. And we need to help our children know uh, how important it is that they use their tongue in the right way. You ever heard the, another proverb that's not one of Solomon's, but sticks and stones may break my bones? What's the rest of it? Now, is that true? It's not true, is it? It is true sticks and stones can break your bones. But it's not true that words will not harm you. Words can hurt you deeply. What somebody says uh, about you or to you uh, can be very hurtful. So we need to teach our children how to speak to others and how to use their words in the right way. Teach them that words do hurt. I uh, read about... A young lady who was Miss America of 2002, her name's Erica Harrell. And uh, she told about, as a youngster in the ninth grade, that uh, she went to a certain school, she was new to school, and how that she was bullied and picked on and threatened by fellow students. She came from a multiracial family. And uh, she was called some very ugly names, received anonymous phone threats, uh, uh, just uh, treated awful. And finally they had to transfer her to another school to get away from that. But she went on to graduate with honors at the Harvard Law School. But uh, as Miss America, uh, her platform was to stop bullying. Teach our children not to do this. Uh, we may not know what our kids are doing in this area, but a lot of this goes on. Uh, James Dobson once uh, in his radio program was talking about this, and he said a friend of his gave him a note that had been sent to this person's child in school. Here's what the note said. Awful Susan, you are the stinkiest girl in the world. I hope you die. Here's some suggestions. Play in the road, cut your throat, drink poison, knife yourself. Please do this, you ugly girl. We all hate you. And we're praying, Lord, let Susan die. Isn't that wonderful to get a note like that? And that happens so much. And there's some parents that need to sit down and talk to their children about the words that they use in talking to other people. Probably some of you have already kind of gone back in your life and remember some hateful things that were said to you or about you. We don't forget those things, do we? They leave scars for a lifetime. Proverbs has a lot to say about words. Uh, Proverbs 18.21, Death and life are in the power of of the tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Words have power to hurt. Let's look in Proverbs 12, verse 5 and 6. Solomon says, The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood. But the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. Drop down to verse 14. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkens unto counsel is wise. A fool's wrath is presently known, but a prudent man covers shame says, he that speaks truth shows forth righteousness, but a false witness deceit. 
There is that speaketh like the piercings of a sword. But the tongue of the wise is health. The lip of truth shall be established forever, but a lying tongue is but for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. There shall no evil happen to the just, but the wicked shall be filled with mischief. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. A prudent man conceals knowledge, but the heart of fools proclaims foolishness. The hand of the diligent shall bear rule, but the slothful shall be under tribute. Heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh it glad. Now think about a father sharing these proverbs with his children. Don't you think that's good? Don't you think we ought to sit down with our children, our grandchildren, and talk to them about these things? How important it is that we use our words wisely to help and heal instead of destroy and kill. So let's think about this tonight. Because, well, think about Adolf Hitler. The words of Adolf Hitler inflamed a nation and brought the world war that cost millions of lives. He wrote a book called Mein Kampf. You know what that means? That's German. You know what Mein Kampf means? My struggle. He was, just, he was sharing his struggle uh, in life. But it was full of words of hate. For every word in that book, 125 people died in World War II. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. What a difference a word can make. But think about this. A whole life can be changed by hearing one word. If you're in a court, how about the word guilty or innocent? Change your whole life, couldn't it? I do change my life. Amen. I said I do. And I did. I'll tell you another change my life was when I said yes to the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's think about this tonight. And if you have children, grandchildren that you can give counsel to, uh, think about this and uh, how we can help them in this country. I read somewhere that in an average day, we speak about 300 or 30,000 words. Now, some do better than that. Amen. I've been around some that far exceed that number. But on average, about 30,000 words a day. How many of those words are helpful and how many are hurtful we use a lot of words and it's so important that we use the right word if you want to take notes first of all let's think about the thoughts we sow he says in verse 5 where we read the thoughts of the righteous are right now your words are but a vehicle of your thoughts you think it first before you say it. We transfer our thoughts into words. Our words reveal what we're thinking, right? So if we're going to have control over our words, first we're going to have to have control over our thought life. Say, well, I can't control what I think. Sure you can. We can all control what we think about. Because what we feed upon is what we think about. First of all, think about how to control your thoughts. In Proverbs 23, 7, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Proverbs 23, 7, As he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Jesus said, Matthew 12, 34, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So it comes back to our thought life. What we think, what's in our hearts. By means of words, 
we sow what's in our thoughts. Now, it's important that we teach our children to be careful what they put in their mind. That's a good place for an amen. And I know I bring this up a lot, but it's, it's just so true. What do we feed upon? What do we think about? Well, there's, there's certain things we do and read that affect and influence our thinking. You know, even the music you listen to will influence your thinking. There, there is such a thing as good music. There's such a thing as bad music. There, there's some music out there that will, will bring you down and will cause you to have bad thoughts. What we read. There's some good literature, there's some bad literature. And we need to help our children in knowing what is good to read and what they should not read. What they watch on television. The movies that they watch. All these things influence our thought process. What is in your mind will come out of your mouth. And if we're feeding upon these things, we're going to end up speaking a lot of trash. So guard your heart. Keep it right and keep it pure. Fill your mind with good things, with the Word of God. Again, teach your children. Ha have devotional time with your children and teach them the Word of God. Sow that in their hearts and minds so that they'll think on those things. Philippi or excuse me, Psalm 119.11. Thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. How do we hide his word in our heart? We memorize it. I, I, I'm glad we have discovery and, and teachers that will help these children memorize scripture. That's so important. That's hiding the word of God in your heart. And when things happen and these children have to make a choice, make a decision, maybe the word of God will come to them and help them make the right decision. Look over in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Paul writing to the church at Philippi. Philippians 4, 8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. That's what to think of. It does, it, it, it does matter what we think. I know we're living a day and time now in a culture where people say, well, uh, you can have these fantasies and, and all of this, and it's harmless. No, it's not harmless. You feed on garbage, and that's what's going to be in your heart. That's what's going to come out of your mouth. It does matter. So we can control our thoughts. Secondly, we need to remember when to conceal our thoughts. Look, go back to Proverbs and uh, look at verse 20. Deceit is in the heart of them that imagine evil, but to the counselors of peace is joy. When we speak words of evil, that is something that's already been in our heart. Now, there's times when we may have a bad thought, but we can suppress that bad thought. We don't have to speak everything we think. Amen? Some people, they just say whatever comes to their mind. Don't you love being around these know-it-alls that just know everything about everything? They're a joy to be around, aren't they? Proverbs 17, 28 says, Even a fool, when he holds his peace, is counted wise. And he that shuts his lip is esteemed a man of understanding. In modern translation, as long as you keep your mouth shut, people won't know how dumb you are. Right? Because when you open your mouth, you remove all doubt. How about Proverbs 29, 20? Seest thou a man that is hasty in his words? There's more hope of a fool than of him. 
people that are so hasty to, to say everything that comes to their mind. They've got a comment about everything. You know, it takes a baby a couple of years to learn how to stand up and speak. Then it takes a lifetime to teach them how to sit down and shut up. Right? Does your mouth ever get you in trouble? You ever say something and immediately you wish you could take it back? We've all been guilty of that, haven't we? I heard about a guy who took his wife sh uh, fishing, and she just wouldn't stop talking. You know, you're not supposed to talk when you're fishing. Is that right, Brother Arvel? You're supposed to be quiet so the fish don't know you're there. But she wouldn't shut up. She was just talking and commenting on everything, griping, complaining, grumbling. Finally, he got a bite and reeled in a fish. She said, poor little fish. He said, well, if he'd kept his mouth shut, he wouldn't have got caught. Little hint for her. It's just better sometimes to keep your mouth shut. And not always speak your mind. Now you, you married folks should have learned this by now. After 40 years of experience as a husband, uh, I can tell you it's better not to comment on everything my mate says and does. There's wisdom to just keep some things to yourself. Amen. Some things are just better left unsaid. All right, here's, we talk about the thoughts we sow, then there's the words we speak. He talks about speaking the truth. Proverbs 12, 17. He that speaketh truth, Shows forth righteousness, but a false witness shows forth deceit. There's a contrast between the, the right kinds of words and the wrong kind. Teach your children to speak the truth. Now, we're living in a world that uses a lot of deceit. What's a spin doctor? You ever heard of a spin doctor in politics? They've got these guys who are skilled in manipulating words for their own purposes. And that's a characteristic of our modern culture, is that words and their meanings are always being changed and even twisted. For example, how about the word tolerant? You hear that word a lot, don't you? It's a good word. It simply means that uh, we ought to be accepting of the beliefs of others, respect others' viewpoint, give them room to express their views, whether you agree with them or not. But now the word tolerant has come to mean that we should accept everything as being equally true. There's no right and wrong. Everything's right. Just accept everything. And... About the only ones who are considered intolerant are fundamental Christians. Everybody else should have their rights except us. We don't have any rights. We don't have a, a right to ever express ourselves. We need to teach our children that, hey, the Lord delays is coming. It's going to get more and more difficult to live the Christian life. It's, hey, it's going to cost something, young people, to take a stand for Jesus Christ. And we need to tell you that right up front. Because if you find out and you're shocked by it, you may not be ready to handle it. We need to teach our children to get ready to handle some persecution. Because it's coming to America. It's already here. Secondly, not only speaking the truth, but how about speaking with tenderness? Verse 18, there is that speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is held. Some words cut, other words heal. There can be healing, there can be edification in our words. We can be helpful to others, we can be an encouragement to others. We, we can speak that which is soothing and beneficial. 
But on the other hand, we can do a lot of, a lot of damage with our words. We can wreck people's lives by what we say. James talked about using words like a deadly poison. So teach your children. Take time to, to look at some of these Proverbs and share them with your children about how to use their words in a right way. Not to be a gossip. I know some people love to pass on a, a juicy bit of gossip. You say, well, preacher, I don't know why people always want to come to me with their gossip. I know why, because you got trash cans for ears. They know you're going to eat it up. If they find out you don't want to hear it, they'll quit coming to you with that gossip. If you refuse to listen, they'll quit coming. Proverbs eleven thirteen. Back up a page here. Proverbs eleven thirteen. A talebearer revealeth secrets. But he that is of a faithful spirit conceals the matter. Tell bears a gossip, right? Now, we church members, we know how to put a little religion on our gossip, don't we? We don't call it gossip, we call it concern. I'm concerned about so-and-so. Let me tell you what I, what I heard about so-and-so. And this is so we can pray for him better, Right? We know how to make it sound religious. But it's still just gossip. And we need to be careful about that. Y'all remember the old TV show, Hee Haw? You remember the girls? I think they're always putting out their, their laundry on the clothesline. They had a song, You'll Never Hear Us Repeating Gossip. So you better be sure to listen close the first time. Because we're not going to repeat it. We're just going to tell it once. I think that's where a lot of people are. Teach your children. Teach yourself that it's never right to say unkind words about others, about their appearance, about their intelligence, about their racial background. All these things are wrong. Kids can be very vicious, can't they? They can be so vicious in attacking one another and we need to teach them hey practice the golden rule do unto others as you'd have them do to you right somebody come up with this a careless word may kindle strife a cruel word may wreck a life a bitter word may hate instill a brutal word may smite and kill Look at verse 22. Lying lips are abomination to the Lord, but they that deal truly are his delight. Now you got a choice here, don't you? Delightful words or detestable words. What if this past week everything you had said had been recorded and we could play it back on the big screen there? Would there have been of anything that you said last week that you would be embarrassed to have put up there for everybody to see and hear? I tell you what, now they got these video, these phones that uh, you never know when somebody's taping you, do you? Those guys on that bus didn't know they were being videotaped and put up on the YouTube and ruined their lives, didn't they? Just some careless words that they didn't think twice about. But you never know. You better be careful. You never know who might be videotaping what you're saying. And it could be on YouTube for the whole world to see. By the way, on the basis of how I speak, would people believe I'm a Christian? Jesus said in Matthew 12, 36, I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. By your words, we'll be 
giving an answer for that, won't we? Here's a third thought. Think about the hearts we could strengthen. There, are, there, there can be words of comfort. Verse 25, heaviness in the heart of man maketh it stoop, but a good word maketh the heart glad. Discouraging words can burden people, but encouraging words can bless people. Wrong words can oppress the spirit, depress the soul, distress the body. So I'm hoping that we'll take this home with us and we'll go out this week and seek to be a blessing to somebody, to encourage others, to make them feel better. I heard about an experiment that was done in Germany back in World War II. They took some orphan children, divided them into two groups. There was a lot of orphans back then, weren't there? They wanted to do an experiment. Two groups of children... They gave them the same diet, the same living arrangement, same kind of atmosphere. But with one group, the, the workers were to be very loving, very kind and gentle to these children. To the other group, the workers were to be very stern, very harsh and unloving to these children. At the end of the experiment, they discovered that those who received the kind treatment were on an average two inches taller and much better health. It makes a difference, doesn't it? It makes a difference. It's sad that so many children these days are constantly living in a home where they're constantly berated. They're told they'll never amount to anything. They're called all kinds of ugly names. We've got children that come here on Wednesday night, and they just revel in the love and attention they get here because they don't get it at home. That's why I appreciate those who work with our youth in Discovery and Crossfire because you don't know how much you're affecting these children. What a blessing. You can be in their lives. Parents should constantly encourage and affirm their children. Treat them with love and kindness. Protect them. Protect them from being mistreated. Be a Barnabas. Be a son of encouragement. Barnabas was one of my favorite Bible characters. He, he was the kind of guy that was always ready to give you a second chance. Remember? He was that way with Paul. Nobody wanted to accept Paul, and he's the one that stood up for Paul when he got saved. He's the one that stood up for John Mark. He said, let's give him a second chance. I, I want to be like that. I, I want to be willing to give somebody a second chance, the benefit of a doubt. I know there's times I have to preach against sin and deal with controversial matters. I have to, to preach the whole counsel of God's Word. But I also want to balance that with messages of love and grace and hope. Because people need to hear that too. Words of counsel. Let me give you some counsel for your children. Parents, grandparents, guard the words you use around these children. Think about what you're saying. I'm talking about your words now. Be careful about what you say. Be careful about putting them down. Be careful about criticizing everything they do. Use praise as positive reinforcement to these children. Look for things to praise them about. Look for something that you can praise them for. And watch them blossom. And then secondly, teach these children how to use their words to be kind to others. They see somebody being bullied, they ought to stand up for that child. Instead of joining in with the taunting and teasing, why don't they stand up for the one being picked on? Teach them to do something nice. 
for others. Do something nice for that handicapped child. Do something nice for that minority child. For that friendless child who's left out. Why not reach out to that person and be a friend? And show them by your example, by being kind to others. Let your children see kindness in how you treat others. If you're not saved, I want you to know God loves you. God will forgive you give you a home in heaven. Jesus says come unto me and I will give you rest. Maybe you've been hurt by a so called Christian. Maybe a Christian has been unkind to you, mistreated you. I'm not asking you to trust in church members. I'm asking you to trust in Jesus Christ. He'll never let you go.